Assalamu alaikum Ya Shaykh Walaykum salam Please can you elaborate on the spiritual eyes and senses? Um, how does this open and how would you know if divine or nafs just for a better understanding? JazakAllah khair Sure, inshaAllah all, all, all we're talking today, this is like building a house. If we want to talk about the roof and the windows but yet we didn't lay the foundation. So this system that's taught is a systematic way of teaching that worry about the energy, worry about how to practice the energy. Ninety percent of the replies to everyone who emails help me at nurmuhammad.com is meditate. Because your question shows you didn't meditate. The other person emails the question, they didn't meditate. This one, they didn't. So you keep saying, why do I keep getting all these replies to say meditation? It's because this is the foundation. If you're not doing the practice, you're not understanding energy, you're not spending the time to make your tafakkur, you're not spending the time to make the connection with the shaykhs, to ask for fires and, and ask for an accounting, what is my character, what is my hisab? You don't want to know these things? Many people are not comfortable to sit and meditate because they don't want to know about themselves. And if you're bold enough to find out about yourself then the next phase is, I want to reach towards this energy. I want the energy of the shaykhs to be present with me because they're like a truth serum. If their light comes it's going to force you to understand what you've done wrong. Because the light of truth comes and it doesn't keep a lie with you and agree with you in your lies. You with yourself are sufficient to lie to yourself. Oh I'm the best, everything's great, right? everything I'm doing is perfect, perfect, thank you, mashaAllah I'm great. But when you meditate and ask for Allah's servants, وَقُنُمَا صَادِقِينَ إِتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Allah says in Holy Qur'an, have a consciousness and keep the company. So it means we keep the company all the time, it wasn't a physical. Allah doesn't care about physicality, keep their company. So as soon as you meditate this was Allah's command, وَقُنُمَا صَادِقِينَ so you're meditating and asking for sadaqi, Ya Rabbi send your rijalullah. And as soon as you're sitting their energy comes and begin a truth. What you did was wrong, what your character did is wrong, why you're angry is wrong. All these things will come because they don't come to lie with you, they come to inspire that what you're thinking was wrong. The character you had was wrong, the arrogance you have is wrong. All of these characteristics it comes with a truthful light into our lives so that we can begin to work on ourselves. Nobody's saying they're perfect but at least they took a path in which to try. Perfection is only for Allah It's not a path of perfection, this is a path in trying. If you don't try it's like going into the grave with cancer. You came into the grave without trying anything? Well that's 70,000 times more difficult. So this life is about trying to clean ourselves, trying to recognize what I'm doing bad, trying to be inspired towards goodness. As a result that's the foundation. When we did that and we meditated, we made the foundation, we made the connection with the shaykhs, the fires of the shaykhs is coming, the rest of all those questions will become clear. That you work through all the bad characteristics and then the fires of the shaykhs are coming, the energy is coming. We said before that as soon as you do the madad and begin to do the practices, you feel energies coming onto you and they grab your heart. And you feel like you're having a heart attack and you don't have to go to the hospital, you don't have to run anywhere. This is the, the jalali tajali that Allah reflect onto the servant, we said is like an earthquake. The, the immense positive light that reflecting it conflicts with the negative standard light of people, right? So the low voltage you're bringing on a high voltage. So that high voltage when it hit you of course it creates a shock and it keeps going up. So you're 50 watts today you got hit. 
and you do this again and Allah says increases voltage. More light comes, again hit the person and they go into a shock, they go into shaking. Because Allah you have to keep increasing in doses, it never reaches a point where it just keeps flowing to you. This energy Allah is of an infinite capacity of power. And every time it comes with a jalali tajali, of course it's going to shake, it's going to crush, it's going to shake everything. And when it comes too much then there are different difficulties upon the body because this energy is running on the spine and running throughout their system, they can overheat, their, their veins have difficulties. So everything has to be through their training, through understanding, through moderation. If they send too much energy to somebody they can have problems in their spine, their vertebrae and many heated issues throughout their body. So that's why they train them on how to bring the energy in, how to keep their wudu, how to ground their energy so that the positive is flowing, pushing the negative and grounding it out. Not to catch it and just keep it going around until it pop out of a vein and you get like something happening onto your body because energy has to leave at a particular way. If you don't then many different types of difficulty. That's why everything is going to go by step, step by step, step by step and a gradual increase of energy and fires. And that's what is meant by the fires of the shaykh. When we talk like this other shaykhs who listen they say, ah we never heard this stuff before. That's okay because you shouldn't be discussing these teachings with any other shaykh. This shaykh has a different understanding and may be at a very different level. It's not handed out for everybody at the same. So the understanding of when people say, get the fires of the shaykh, keep your nazar upon us, what does the nazar mean and the fires? From their haqiqat tawajju when they achieved haqiqat tawajju and haqiqat tawassul. Haqiqat tawajju is that they were trained. And they were trained that when you reach to the hawla wa la quwwa through the wajh from their face to the face of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's ruhaniyat is a tawajjuh means they're receiving from the face onto their soul. They achieve those realities and that power is dressing continuously on them. The tawassul is that through that same connection they can pray back that, please resolve this, pray for this, do to this. They're not using physical, they're using from the connection of their soul which is the ocean of power. So normal people say, oh nazar, we've heard that. Other people who know tariqah they say, faiz, the faiz of the shaykh. But can they explain it? Because you have to be from it. So the haqiqat tawajju and haqiqat tawassul that they reached a place in which their face reached the face of power and that face can keep alternating from the face of Sayyidina Muhammad to the face of their shaykhs and Ahlul Bayt and Ashab al Nabi <coughs> And one whom has an open heart in the associations many faces are changing on the shaykh throughout the association. Throughout the whole shajara, throughout all Ahlul Bayt <coughs> can be dressing the face of the shaykh at any moment during the khatams, the zikrs and the mawlids because that's the reality of that tawajju. And tawassul is the way in which they convey their concerns and the needs of what's being needed upon this earth from the servants of Allah back and towards the oceans of power inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Do we have to do the awrad exactly as you have requested, having a hard time to complete it or else can we recite something else? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Be interesting how <clears throat> why we teach by analogy and why Allah revealed all these technologies not for shaitan to make money we said. These technologies are not here for Sony and Apple to make billions and trillions of dollars you know ripping people off. These were the technologies of the heavens. 
and every technology of the heaven was to be a ni'mat for Allah's creation because He loves His creation, wanted to make their life to be easy. You know electricity is free, water is free, all of this power is free, it's mankind that hid it and sold it. They're using fossil energy which is all satanic and has to do with shaitan and, and, and the source of where shaitan is coming from. Anything from petro petroleum has to do with the satanic energy. Energy was free from where? The sun and their pyramids and their ancient understandings all used free energy from the sun and the future will come where their energy will be free again when the higher technologies come back onto earth. But what was the question? Do we have to do the awrad exactly yeah. as you have requested yeah. or can we recite something else? So the technology, where we went with this with the technology. So the technology has an immense reality. If you say, Shaykh I need your phone number, I need to talk to you and I give you the phone number and da 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 and the last number is seven. And you email back, thank you for the phone number, can I ask you a question, can I dial six? Is what you're asking me. You ask for the number, I give you the number, then you ask me, can I dial six? If that's how you think, go right ahead. I don't think you'll ever reach this system with that mentality. When they give and it's not me giving an awrat, if we follow what Shaykh Nazim has left as an inheritance, but what is the Naqshbandi wazifa? That you recite that on a daily basis to connect with the Naqshbandi shaykhs. If you say, I don't know this surah, I want to add this surah, this is a mobile number. This is a number that they've been given to their heart, recite this, make the madad of what this man teaches and we're with you. Then you begin to have dreams of them to show, we're with you, we're sitting with you, we're dining with you, we're entering in your home having lunch with you. Many people have beatific visits to show that you dialed the right number. But if you alter it and say, I want to recite a different awrad, can I, can I change the surah at the end? It's as if you're exactly changing the number. And we don't usually argue with people because then if we email back, no you can't then they say, why I can't and then become now a, a debate. But the adab is then we just stay silent and don't understand why you would ask that. If you ask for the awrad, this is the awrad, you do the awrad, you make your connection. You don't want to do the awrad, then do it if you want. But you must be having problems because you emailed and whatever you were doing it was not working. And that's the problem with many subcontinent cultures that they have shaykhs on every block. And this is the, the, the difficulty and Allah likes testing. So when you say, why would it happen, why Allah would allow it? Because Allah likes it to be spicy. You know if you have a dish it is boring when it's just regular. Allah kick it up with some more chilies and more chilies and more chili until it's so hot you can't take even one bite from it and He loves to stir it up. So then in these cultures where there's a shaykh on every block, Allah doesn't mind. He said, let there be ten shaykhs on every block but He wants to know, how come you're not loyal enough to sit with your shaykh? And it's not that there's twenty shaykhs on the block. But how come you're not a loyal person is the concern. And that disloyalty will carry you through everything that you do in life. So that's why they have visiting shaykhs that roam around and make fitna and tell lies about the shaykh that you're following. And that's why when you have a shaykh and you're learning from the shaykh, you're learning from his realities, you then lock yourself off to everything else. If you feel that that shaykh doesn't fulfill you with realities, with knowledges, with teachings, you go there and it's just cheddar cheese. So he's not saying anything, he doesn't talk anything, I don't feel like myself growing, find yourself a different shaykh. But if the one feeding you, Imam Ali said, if somebody taught you alif, you owe your life to him. Alif, alif is Izzatullah <laughs> You got it?
<laughs> yeah. You took the knowledge, Allah wants to see, how come this one's not loyal to you? We chop 10 shaykhs, he's going to go sit with 10 of them. For what? So at, at this point Allah is testing the servant, Sayyidina Muhammad is testing. You portray only your shaykh, you talk only about your shaykh, you convey only about your shaykh, not 50 different shaykhs because we don't know then your milkshake. We don't know you got vanilla in it, you got strawberry in it, you got chocolate in it. Your life's purpose is, I received and I'm now a servant to convey. What he taught, I'm going to teach. What he taught, I'm going to convey. So that way we understood the loyalty, we understood the connection. As a result, the shaykh's ridha and satisfaction begin to open a fires. When the student is committed and the student is loyal because the shaykh doesn't need it, we talked about that also, the shaykh doesn't need it. He needs 10, 15 men that will change the earth. You don't need 10,000 people, what are you going to do with 10,000 people? You can't even feed them, you can't have an event with them. Give me good 10, 15 good men and we change the earth. Make your videos, make your salawats, make your internet, make your apps, make all these projects. So it's not about shaykh needing anyone, it's the person needs to show to Allah I hold this like my love for Sayyidina Muhammad And with that Ya Rabbi I'm showing my loyalty, I show my honour, I show my respect. With that becomes the example of my way so that my way is sincere. And that I gain sincerity with Allah Allah watch, Prophet watching and say, grant this one to be and to have the fires, have the loyalty and the connection because that one knows, I'm with that shaykh, I take from that shaykh that is everything that coming to me so that I know when something opened, it opened from him. And when a sickness was taken away, it was taken from them. If we don't know then so I don't know who it was, I said when 10 different people. Then you don't even know who you're loyal to. Say, who's your daddy? You don't have any understanding of who, who, who am I with? And that becomes the problem when they sit with 20 different people, they go 20 different under, uh, associations, they're 15 different locations and this reality is so binding and so locked in that I have to have a very strong relationship, very loving relationship and that builds the bond. So before that if people are coming and going you're not catching the nazar of the shaykh. When you say, okay pray for me and then you see the person posting 20 different places, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me, oh, it became something, just something cheap. But when the person is, you know that they're wholly committed to you and they're hoping you're praying for them. But of course you're praying for them because their love for you and your love for them and that's how the system works. So you understand that this is and he is like my father. I have a father that brought me into this earth and I have a father who's taking me back into the heavens. If, if they can be both that would be great but most likely they're not, they're different ones and that's why the loyalty <laughs> Shalla. We have another one, these people look tired or they're hungry, I think Hazan is hungry. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Sayyidi, you previously mentioned that white dots around the house represent mu'min jinn. Should I be concerned if sometimes I see blue dots or blue energy? I have all the Naqshbandi Taweezes around my home. Yeah. I, I think that, that I don't remember myself ever quoting white dots represent jinn in, in the house. Those, that probably is a video you watched from orbs. That energy uh, without a mass becomes circular. So with these modern technologies and cameras you go in a dark area and just shoot in the dark room and you'll find all these orbs what they call and these are energies that have no mass and as a result you see circles in millions in one shot, some places more intense than others. So this is a realm of the unseen. Now their colors can be differing, 
some can be black from the black reality, the shadow reality, they can be from light beings which are light and blue and green and all the different colors. But don't focus on them, focus on the shaykhs, the madad, the energies and there are many energies that will be occupying your home. Anything bad put the taweez, put the salawats, put the zikrs, make your madad, make all your practices and leave the rest alone. The mu'min ones occupy the space to begin to protect, Allah send them to live and occupy that space to begin to protect the believers. You know it's like from their race, you can't protect yourself from them, Allah has to send their own race into the home. So from the mu'min believers and the mu'min their level of belief they never interact with the human race, only with the shaykhs. The mu'min jinn their, their bayat and their connection and their allegiance, their promise to Allah was never to interfere with the human race. So the mu'min ones they don't interact, you don't call them, you don't try to talk to them, you just do your practices and do your madad and that's it, don't worry about the rest. You put the taweez, those are energies, you put the salawats, the zikrs, broadcast the khatm e these bring immense energy for mu'min beings. They want that energy, they want that energy to purify the space, cleanse the space, everything, inshaAllah. Mm. As salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam For grounding the energy, what is the ideal grounding substance or matter? Are tiles okay, okay or wood? Would a wooden floor be better for example? Mm. Again you again where, wherever you have. So if we say wood and everyone's gonna start emailing, I have marble shaykh, I'm doomed, I, have, I can't I have nowhere to ground myself. No, so it's, everything is grounding. It, ideally wood is, is very good, you can have the asa and wood in your hand and the, the, the reality of that alhamdulillah. So that, that should be just enough, if not then whatever surface that you have and the reality of wood with the tasbih, that we don't uh, use plastic tasbihs because the wood carries the barakah, the wood uh, it saturates these lights and these blessings. So they, they contain all these zikrs and all these practices and they become an immense source of blessings. So and for asa if they need, if there's a lot of energy, a lot of incorrect energy then they can hold the wood as a grounding. Even at home they can have an asa and just sit and do the zikr because I am sitting on a chair and doing my zikr. Yeah, inshaAllah. As salaamu uh, Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam Which of your books should I read first? Depending upon your background and your interest, if you're coming from a Western ideology then the angelic energy. Because you can get into the understanding of energies and how to build the energy and how the practices of the energy. If you're coming from Islamic background then the levels of the heart because the levels of the heart may be a bit difficult for somebody new because of the terminologies and the words we use. And pretty soon there will be the reference book uh, called The Timeless Reality which is for the muraqabah and the meditation. And that's two years of questions and answers so it covers everything like an encyclopedia for tafakkur. So that you can always just look up from the table of contents, hands, oh here's the importance of what to do with hands. Grounding, here's the importance of grounding. You know the stones, here's the importance of the stone. So that'll be like a reference. But if you're coming Western is the angelic, the divinely, what's the, the title? Reality? No, the angelic power, oh, healing, power. healing power of angelic energy, in pursuit of angelic energy. <laughs> A power? It's good I know my own book titles, <laughs> yeah, inshaAllah. This kid, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifoon wa Salaamun al Mursaleen wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs> <laughs>